Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I want to talk about five things I learned while shooting a cinematic B-roll sequence for the first time. So recently, a friend and I were talking about different ways we could challenge ourselves or push ourselves creatively. You know how it is, sometimes it can be a little difficult to get out there and do your creative thing after working 8-10 hours a day and family life, personal life, everything gets in the way. One of the things he came up with was a simple B-roll challenge. Nothing fancy, just we would, throughout the course of the week, go out and film what we could edit it together, and at the end of the week we would share it and critique each other and see what we can do to improve on from there. I thought this was a great idea because I actually wanted to shoot some sort of cinematic b-roll sequence that I can edit down into like a 10 to 15 second segment and use it at the beginning of all my YouTube videos from now on, and as I got better, maybe start to um, change out some of the the segments of it so it can progress with me as I advance my skill level. So I just wanted to go over a few of the things I learned while shooting that sequence. Um, they're not ranked in any order of importance but the first one I'll start off with was learning to plan out my shots. For example, when I was filming the b-roll down by the storefront and the beach, I may have been tempted to just pan in one shot from the storefront to the beach. Um, almost like when you're shooting home video, that's what you're, you're used to doing. Um, but when you slow down a little bit and think of it from a more professional looking standpoint um, and break it down into specific little shots, it starts to look a lot better. Um, and then you add a little movement to those shots, whether it's panning left, right, uh, zooming in or out, or you can get really creative with that. Um, for most of my shots, I just did a, a simple pan left and right or a, a zoom in and out. Um, but the, the sky's the limit with that. But just slowing down and really planning out the shots probably made the biggest difference in... probably made the biggest difference to me while I was doing this little exercise. The second tip I would definitely rank pretty high would be using manual settings as much as you can. We, we've all heard everybody say it, but at least I personally haven't had to worry about it too much, at least with the autofocus and even the, the auto white balance to some extent. If you take a look at this clip right here, you can see that the camera is hunting back and forth for focus and it just doesn't look good. Um, if I were to shoot this again, I would have the camera in manual focus, set my subject in focus, and then start filming, and I think it would just give a much more professional result. And that also goes for the white balance. I didn't have too much of an issue with it, but again, I would set the white balance next time, so if you get a lot of light change, you don't have the camera ramping up and down, making it look all weird. That brings me to number three, which is don't delete in your camera or phone or whatever you're using. Um, there was plenty of shots that I thought were terrible, but I left them in the camera, and when you get back and you put them in your editing software, you can usually do quite a bit with it. Or at least, for instance, that shot I was talking about with the focus, I was still able to find a 
one to two second clip of that and have something very usable. That was a tip I was given early on when I started with the photography, and I think it's saved me a lot of headache that a bunch of people go through. So hopefully that one can help you out quite a bit. The fourth tip is a simple one. Just get help if you think you need it. There was a couple shots I wanted to get where I wanted to zoom in and out from my face, and I was trying to do it with my phone on a little gimbal. And I'm sure with enough time I could have gotten something usable. If there's absolutely nobody around you, you can still get the shot. But I decided to just ask my wife if she wouldn't mind helping me out for a little bit. Um, I showed her the shot I wanted by filming it on her and then letting her see it back on the screen and then just let her do her thing and she got very usable shots because that's what I used in the clip. Um, so definitely don't be afraid if you don't have anybody around you who is in the filming. Um, just ask wh whoever's around you. I'm sure you have somebody who wouldn't mind giving it 10 to 15 minutes of their time and who knows it might become something fun you guys like doing together. And the last tip I have is just use what you have. Um, I don't have a ton of expensive gear yet. Um, I'm currently using A6000, uh, the Sony A6000 as my main camera. But actually most of the shots in that cinematic sequence were all filmed on my iPhone. So definitely don't let gear be something that holds you back. So if you found any of this useful or helpful in any way, please like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.